Is there anything else that says cool and hip like James Bond sunglasses? I think not. Today, we explore the sunglasses of James Bond. Hello, David Zritsky from the Bond Experience. Welcome back. Well, we're on a roll talking about accessories of James Bond. And we're going to be going through pretty much from the early Connery movies all the way forward to talk about his sunglasses. I mean, I've always found sunglasses an amazingly cool accessory. Not only can they be worn, not only do they make you look a little mysterious and interesting and spy-like, they're very practical. Uh, there's something that you can wear every day. They don't overtly scream out Bond. It's not like a t-shirt that says Skyfall or Thunderball on it but they are an interesting accessory. Little note, and a lot of you know this, in the Fleming books, sunglasses really aren't talked about. I think there's there's one reference to it in, in one of the Ian Fleming books. There's a lot of focus on cigarettes and lighters and obviously cars and clothing, but not a lot on sunglasses. And even in the Bond movies, the early movies, really, they show Jack Lord wearing a pair, but not really Bond until he gets to, you know, a couple films in. Now, this particular one right here by Curry and Paxton that was revived by uh, the good people at Mason and Sons is one of these that I, I really, sorry, Sean, um, really, really like. And the reason I like it is because this is supposedly, um, and I want to get this right so I'm going to actually take a look. This could have been taken from a Polaroid Cool Ray uh, version of sunglasses. But what I like about it, and I'm going to get a little bit close so you can actually see them. Um, I love them because they're a lightweight frame. The Curry and Paxton look, obviously, is extremely nice. They come with this uh, wonderful case, and I'll just highlight that for a second. The case itself is lined in a felt with a wonderful cleaning cloth, but you know something? I find a lot of these kind of classic sunglasses a little bit too big, a little bit too unwieldy. This isn't. It has a classic look. And there was that one scene with Sean Connery when, when he's talking to Domino and he's on the beach in the pink gingham shirt, just like this one. And, you know, it's that indelible kind of moment of 1960s cool. And I'm sorry, folks, nothing says really cool like sunglasses, which is one of the reasons why we're going to explore these. Now, the Curry and Paxton, still available. Again, it's been revived as a brand. It captures that look. But to me, this is not just about form and functionality. It's about what type of emotion do, do these sunglasses evoke, either when you wear them and what you wear with them, or when other people see you in them. So, dig in these Connery ones, but let's move forward. So, we really start to see some interesting sunglasses and goggles around on Her Majesty's Secret Service, and George Lazenby wears them well. The first scene that we actually see a pair of sunglasses are these Nighthawks. Now, these are actual 1960s Nighthawks. If I bring them up close, you can see I was lucky enough to find what's called new old stock. Essentially, it still has the stickers on them. It still has all of the details on it. It's in fantastic shape. In other words, nobody's worn these. They were found in some big box in somebody's basement. So um, I'm not taking this part off because it's quite the collectible, but you can see how this is on. Now, these um, arguably may be a bit too small for the ones in the movie. I think there were two sizes. There were these, um, and then there was a slightly bigger one. Who knows? When you put them down, they may be the bigger ones. I'm not that much of a completist. But the Nighthawk glasses were specifically created 
to be worn at night while you drive. Now, we know nowadays in modern times the opposite is true. These do not help you to see clearer at night. They actually, um, no, quite the opposite. You will just drive over a cliff in many cases. But in the movie, it sets up something very mysterious. You know, you could see it's around uh, in the morning or is it in the evening, but it's dusk either way. And he puts them down on the seat of the Aston Martin next to the Atlas. And we've got Bond's sunglasses. But of course, he also wears other things throughout the movie. Check these babies out. Yeah, you can see going down the, uh, the ski slope in these things. And yeah, I'm going to put them on. Why not? Bug-eyed. Hello there. I am Ant-Man. No, no, not so much. So we got the Lazenby goggles here. And again, yes, you might find this um, very, very natural in the 1960s. I think if I went skiing or bobsledding in these today, I might get a couple second looks, but really good acuity, clarity of look. I mean, the lenses still really hold up, even though they're from the 1960s. And you know what? Maybe you gravitate more towards the bad guy or Tracy's goggles, and you want to wear something like this. Cockroach City. Um, quite interesting, very 1960s. What I love about all three of those is they scream out the era. They, they look like they've been taken specifically from the period, which how could you not find that charming? So I think it can be argued, probably unsuccessfully, that um, in The Living Daylights, uh, Bond uses these. Now, Timothy Dalton, as our Bond, uses these to really kind of focus on his target. Are they sunglasses? No, they don't really reflect the sun, but he does wear them like that. So is it close? Well, then, yeah, but then you'd have to, you know, say these are glasses, which technically they are, they're binoculars. And then even going down one more path, would you say that these that Q wears are glasses? Well, they are, but they're not sunglasses, so we're not going to count them. Moving on. Well, the sunglasses worn in the world is not enough. Huge favorite of mine. I mean, you've got these right here, which I had to get when this first came out. These are the CK 2007. Here we go. I'm wearing them right now. This is in that amazing ski scene. He's skiing down the line. He puts on these glasses. Uh, these are very rare. I mean, I've seen them with and without the box for an incredible amount of money. Um, but here they are. They're in great shape. I used to wear these a lot. I'm looking at them right now and they, they, they look a little bit dated. You know, the world is not enough. It was a little bit ago, right? Um, but they're super comfortable. These were not the famous ones, though, in that movie. If you remember correctly, um, it, were, it was the X-ray specs. Okay, here they are. Now, these were allegedly bought at, in a high street store. Um, so a lot of people thought that they were Calvin Klein, so they all bought Calvin Klein ones out there, um, like mine. So these are actually Calvin Klein that everybody thought were the ones used in the movie. And if I get a little bit closer, like this, hello, um, you can see that they still have the same look as the one that Brosnan was using. I love that scene when he's got the x-ray specs on. He encounters it with Q, and then obviously later amongst the casino part. But again, I used to wear these quite a bit just because I think they fit the role and the representation of a movie that I really liked. So in James Bond's Die Another Day, uh, Brosnan wears the Persol 2672-S. And by the way, what's interesting about these is they were especially designed for the film itself. How's that? Uh, they are tortoiseshell frame with Persol signature silver arrows, temples, dark brown lenses. Pretty obvious. Again, very hard to get nowadays. So here are the Persols right here. You can see the case. Uh, case didn't change much from movie to movie. It's got a nice felt lining in here. But here are the sunglasses. So we'll try to get up as close as we can get without getting a little weird. See the different, uh, the four lines on the side? It's got a very nice look. These are brown lenses, like he wears in Cuba. And so I've got to tell you, these are, these feel heavy and big now. Now, mind you, this is from Die Another Day. It's going back to 2002, and it's been a little bit, but I, I expected these to be a little bit more classic. You can see them from the side. You can see them from the front. You can see them from the other side. Again, love Purcell. I wear 
Purcell all the time now, but these just feel now a little bit chunky. Could be a sign of the times, don't know. But you know what? They're not leaving my collection. One more piece just for Ha Ha. Of course, when they watch the lovely explosive ending of Die Another Day, they're wearing the sunglasses when they watch Icarus, all the people. There we go. We've got the Icarus sunglasses. No, we don't, but I think they're pretty close. So we'll go with that. And now we move to Casino Royale, where we're actually going to start with something that isn't Bond, and that's this. This is the Versace sunglasses that are worn by Vesper. What I always liked about these, though, was you can see here, it almost shows like there's a carving of Vesper. It's, it's part of the actual Versace sunglass case. But here are the Versace ones. They're incredibly light. They're hard to get. You can see the Versace actually on the back. And I'm not going to try these on because these are meant for the Vespers in our life. So we'll keep them right there. Of course, we had to also show you a bad guy. That's our friend who gets, uh, well, it gets a nail in the eyeball and, you know, need to have it because, quite frankly, there's his matching suit. Now, when it came to Casino Royale, we have a bevy of different sunglasses to choose from. The Persol 2244 sunglasses go really well with Bond's linen gray suit. And here you have off to the right in the lower right, those very sunglasses. The Persol 2720-S are the ones that are just above. They're the heavier tortoiseshell frame green lenses. They got a very distinctive Persol uh, hinge, but that's when Bond first meets Mathis. All of that comes together. So from a fit perspective, I think these, going way back to 2006, that's not a very long time, still look and feel, feel very good. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see the size of these, all right? You can see the other side. You can see it very close up. It's got those wonderful brown lenses. Now, this was fun, wasn't it, when we all ordered these? The, <laughs> these were the black ones. Uh, everybody thought that they were black with green lenses. Meanwhile, there, there were these brown ones with the brown lenses. But of course, when Bond goes to meet Mathis, as we mentioned, and in some of the other scenes like the uh, the water and Venice scene, etc. He wears these. They're the heavier tortoiseshell ones. Let me get in a little bit closer so you can see them. Very comfortable. A little sleeker than the ones you saw over in Die Another Day, but a great piece. And what I really like about these in general is, check this out. They went even farther. They did a 007 engraved case for these Persils. Little details like that send a collectible like me, a collector like me, maybe I am a collectible, up the ceiling. We love that type of stuff. So it really just ground everything together nicely. So in Quantum of Solace, we get James Bond arriving in Port-au-Prince. He makes his way by taxi to the Hotel de Salinas on the tail of Mr. Slate. You know the part because it looks amazing. It's got great polos, great outfits, and it's got these great Tom Ford sunglasses, the Tom Ford 108s, which have become pretty rare. I mean, they go for an excruciating high price. Um, what's nice about these, obviously, it has the Tom Ford James Bond acknowledgement. There hasn't been a lot of things, well, has there been anything else from Tom Ford that has the acknowledgement of James Bond? I don't think so. Um, and you also see this when he visits Mathis in Talamon, which is kind of interesting since it uh, looks like he gets kind of pulverized in the water there, but this sunglasses kind of make it, uh, make it alive. These were the ones, as you remember, that uh, we all bought the wrong ones with. Now, I know you all remember the story. We all bought Oliver Peoples Airmen. Oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, but now we have the right ones, or you may have the right ones. There's some replicas out there of this, but the Tom Ford ones, you can see right here, we'll kind of bring it up close for a second. Really nice case, love the case. It's got the acknowledgement of James Bond here, as well as, look at that, on the cloth itself. And here they are up close. Really nice blue lenses. I think, um, for me, they're one of my favorites that Tom Ford has made because they're light. I need light. I've got a very sensitive bridge on my nose. Plus, it really captures that moment from Quantum of Solace during those scenes that I've really come to really grow in love over time. And that brings us to Skyfall and the Marco FT0144 18V rhodium frame blue lenses. Bond wears them, if you remember, on Silva's Island. He uh, he just pulls them out of his tuxedo pocket. Where he got them, I have no idea, but it's a very 
cool, badass moment in and of itself. So I not only appreciated the scene, uh, the emotional connection to the Steve McQueen moment where he pulls these out so much in Skyfall that I actually had these um, put in with prescription lenses. So right now I've got my prescription lenses in there. Um, I find the drops a little big for me, but I tend to go towards these aviators. I think they look a little bit more flattering on me than the heavy tortoise shell, not to mention, again, sensitive nose bridge. Uh, so again, it's one of those situations where I like the case, I like the detailing, and these are pretty readily available, which is kind of nice for a James Bond pair of sunglasses. And of course, that brings us to Spectre. Now in Spectre, we have two pairs of sunglasses that Tom, Port, Tom Ford provided. Uh, they, he first did the one at the funeral in Rome, which are these right here. And you know that there was a lot of speculation of whether these were brown or black, and yeah, they're brown. Um, but the other um, pair of sunglasses, which we have right here, are the ones that we see in Morocco, and they tend to be a little bit of the favorite. Um, these right here are the color code Havana 52N. These over in the back are the Henry Vintage Wayfair FT02448, model in color code 52A, and you better believe I'm reading that off, and that's why I'm all over the board. These, um, this one feels light, but it feels nicely made. I, I do like the way that's made. Um, I haven't really worn it out in the wild. These feel a little bit lighter, um, not as hardy, if you will, but my favorite sunglasses from the movie have got to be these. These are a vintage model Varnay. How's that? And the vintage model Varnay, um, probably uh, model 027, they released a similar model, but I was able and fortunate enough to have some great people out there that were able to acquire um, one of the correct ones for me. And you can see them there. This is what we call new old stock. You remember that? And what that means is nobody else has worn this. It's in perfect shape. What was really cool about this is, check this out. <laughs> this is an old case, but look at the condition that it's in. It's in great condition. It's got all the papers in there. It's got the cloth. I mean, this could not be more complete. And it's hard to still find these kind of rubberized straps on here. But sure enough, we do. I also happen to like, and you can see the, the Tom Ford jacket in the background. I like that scene. Um, so for me, getting sunglasses that have a great connection to a scene that you want to capture is, is really half the fun. I mean, why would you wear a pair of sunglasses or any kind of accessory or clothing from a scene or event or a film that you just weren't excited about. And of course, these just were great. He didn't wear them a lot. Uh, it's kind of funny how he just comes right out and you see them, but there they are. So, you know, half the fun of this is trying them on. So here we go. And I think they look pretty natural. I could definitely get away with this. It's not the aviators like I typically like, but they're very slight. They're very thin. These tend to get a little bit chunkier. So you can see, um, probably wouldn't be my go-to, uh, would be pretty unusual. So fortunately, these have turned into a collector piece. And then of course these, which, <laughs> uh, David, good luck finding a place to wear these. Maybe on a ski slope, maybe snowboarding if I ever try snowboarding, but uh, that'll just give you a wonderful idea of what those look like. Wow. I'll tell you, this has got good cataract control. If I ever have glaucoma, I'm going to these for sure. There are those people out there that collect vintage sunglasses, sunglasses that are a little bit avant-garde. We just happen to collect ones that James Bond has utilized throughout the movies. He's got an incredible history, a journey of sunglass moments, and now we do too. I mean, how many trips have you been on where you've taken your James Bond sunglasses with you, taken a look in a mirror or reflection and said, I think I've captured that moment. Again, it's an invisible Bond moment. Not everybody knows that I'm wearing, for example, right now, the Quantum of Solace, James Bond, Tom Ford sunglasses. You know it, right? I mean, you've lived with these, but it's a wonderful connection to James Bond that again, it makes this invisible hobby just a little bit more pleasurable. Anyway, this has been David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience, and we will see you very soon. Take care. Oh, hey, you're still here. I didn't even know. Uh, you listen, while you're here, uh, if you want, I, I, so I would actually go 
to this button right here and click on it because then you actually subscribe to our vlogs. It's amazing. Um, you get to see all the upcoming stuff first. You get notifications. It screams at you while you're at work. It's absolutely amazing. Just click on this button, hit subscribe. Just move your cursor, move, 